next concept that is applications of cold rash law very very important concept of cold rash law now we have already said at infinite dilution the molar conductivity at infinite dilution can be determined by the what do you say um, and the contribution of both the cation as well as anion multiplied by their molar conductivities now what did we observe we have drawn a graph like this isn't it now in this graph i have plotted the molar conductivity on the y-axis sorry and the concentration on the x-axis I have got two graphs. One was for the strong electrolytes where I extrapolated and joined and found molar conductivity at infinite dilution. This is for strong electrolytes. But there was one more graph that is for weak electrolyte. Your graph was like this. This is for weak electrolyte CH3COOH. Now, if you have to find out the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for weak electrolyte, can you extrapolate the graph? Can you join or just like KCl strong electrolyte, can you extrapolate and join it at some point? We can't do, isn't it? So, this is where your cold rush law application stands. What do you say? Application of cold rush law, it is used to determine determination of <coughs> molar conductivity at infinite dilution for weak electrolytes so because we can't extrapolate the graph weak electrolytes example acetic acid then so what do we do we are going to use cold rash formula for this <coughs> now if i have to take okay so let us write the reason yeah uh, lambda infinity for weak electrolytes this one cannot be obtained cannot be cannot be obtained by extrapolation i can't drag it and join it somewhere by extrapolation hence kolrash law kolrash law is used are applied okay what is the formula now cold rash according to cold rash law in lambda m infinite dilution is equal to <coughs> charge of the cation but infinite dilution multiplied by its molar conductivity at infinite dilution plus the number of anions multiplied by its molar conductivity at infinite dilution now pick up your acetic acid that is acetic acid is a weak acid so here what am i going to take i am going to find for acetic acid that is equal to how does acetic acid dissociate it dissociates into ch3coh it dissociates into ch3coo minus and h plus now try to introduce that here now in this particular case <coughs> the cation what is the cation that is your proton that h plus now h plus plus is to infinity in molar conductivity this one uh, of h plus and infinity plus v ch3 co minus at infinity and now minus okay ch3 co minus and infinity now we very well know that this is number of cations this is number of anions the number of cations that is v is uh, one for here for the acetic acid and here also it is one so let us neglect this these two are one one so i'm left over with this now this value tableau column it's already given to you if the values are given to you in the question so we can write because this is equal to one okay we will write h plus infinity is one and acetic acid infinity is one because number is only one isn't it so i'm left with individual join add those so what is uh, molar conductivity of h plus infinite dilution it is equal to it is equal to 349.8 so it is equal to 349.8 plus this values are given to you for acetic acid it is 40.9 40.9 so when i add this i get molar conductivity infinite dilution for a weak electrolyte which is equal to uh, 390.7 units you are going to write semen centimeter square mole inverse 1 okay this is your answer so this is how you are going to determine the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for weak electrolytes using cold rush law this is the first application of cold rush law right 
now if you are asked so this basically this topic you will be doing it in numericals also suppose specifically if they have not given you any example of a weak electrolyte like acetic acid now if you have are asked to find out the limit molar conductivity at infinite dilution what is the procedure let's see suppose if i have to determine i have a weak electrolyte ma so what do i do in this ma <coughs> this some some electrolyte first try to consider three different types of salts first one for this ma try to write mcl next one try to pick up na and a i'll tell you why so you see here there is where you can remove nacl and finally form ma right last one would be nacl hope you understood this mcl is one salt NaA is one salt and when I have, why did I take these combination because NaCl I can separate out. First let us write the ions. First important thing for lambda MCl at infinity what are the ions formed? <coughs> it is um, equal to lambda M infinity this is plus plus lambda Cl minus infinity for the first one for the second one infinity that is NaA infinity is equal to lambda Na plus A infinity plus I'm just breaking into ions in uh, molar conductivity of A minus at infinity the last one molar conductivity of NaCl at infinity is equal to its respective molar conductivity that is Na plus at infinite dilution plus NaCl minus at infinite dilution. Hope you would have understood this. First try to understand this concept right. So then come back to this. I broke into ions. Now let us join everything. Observe carefully. First add 1, 2, 3 right. First take this part on the LHS. The lambda MCL infinity plus this quantity the NaA infinity. Now careful. What are you finding? You have to find for Ma weak electrolyte. So here when I have should I add this or subtract this? I have to subtract this. See here infinity by <coughs> NaCl. Right? If I have to subtract this that means I have to take out NaCl from this. Simple isn't it? When I take NaCl from this then only I will be left with M and A. That's why you are subtracting this quantity. You When you subtract this quantity NaCl from here the leftover is Ma that means you are finding molar conductivity for Ma. Done. This which is equal to now add everything. Add all these. Now lambda M to infinity plus Cl minus infinity put it in one bracket plus. <coughs> Second one, Na plus plus Na minus all infinity. Okay, this is okay. Let us okay. Bracket if you are not writing also no problem. They get cancelled. Now I have to subtract this quantity, isn't it? Only if I subtract, I will get with Ma only minus lambda infinity Na plus plus Cl minus infinity. Now see here. This is plus Na. This and this gets cancelled. If I put a bracket like this, this this minus also uh, minus into plus minus. So Cl minus. Now this is C minus Cl minus, and this is plus minus. What are we left with? We are left with only these two. So M da M C L infinity of okay, M A is equal to there we have written isn't it right so infinity is equal to lamb molar conductivity of m in plus molar conductivity of a minus at infinite dilution observe carefully first i took the given one i have written the combination so that only m a will be left out then i have written the respective ions after that i very well know if i add these two and subtract the third one i will be left with a when I did the same thing, I did with their ions also. Minus and minus plus got cancelled. Plus and minus got cancelled. Plus and minus got cancelled. I am left out with <coughs> molar conductivity of M at infinite dilution plus molar conductivity of A at infinite dilution. So this is how you are going to find for weak electrolytes. You are going to write this in this way. Right. Let's come back and see the next application of your Kohlrausch law. So Kohlrausch law, the next thing what we are going to study is determination of degree of ionization of weak electrolytes. Okay. So degree of dissociation, ionization of weak electrolyte is denoted by alpha C. 
okay let's write this this is this c is degree of ionization of weak electrolyte at concentration c okay correct concentration c now very we very well know weak electrolytes dissociation it's not easy to find out directly because the dissociation is very less now when i have to write the formula the formula for degree of dissociation is just see the molar conductivity again divided by molar conductivity now you have to be careful here this molar conductivity is at infinite dilution done now this molar conductivity is at certain concentration c okay right so let us write again it's a ratio of the molar conductivity at concentration c molar conductivity at concentration c this one molar conductivity at infinite dilution both are the concepts now how can i find out uh, this one um, the, this particular quantity degree of dissociation what is this further equal to we very well know <coughs> at certain concentration yeah this from cold ash law we have already learned the molar conductivity at infinite dilution is equal to the number of cations at infinite dilution multiplied by its molar conductivity at infinite dilution plus the number of anions at infinite dilution into the molar conductivity at infinite dilution right now <coughs> simple isn't it now if i find these values i can find get these values i've already shown you how to calculate the values of uh, molar conductivity of unknown uh, this an ma i took the example so you will find the values of this one this one from kolrash equation and finally substitute in this here these values also will be given molar conductivity of the particular cation and molar conductivity particular anion so when these values are known i can easily determine the degree of ionization so this is how you are going to write so what will we write lambda mc and molar conductivity at infinite dilution values are obtained are obtained from cold rush law cold rush law i am uh, just writing okay cold rush law and hence the degree of ionization of weak electrolytes can be different so if you know this automatically this is known as it rush law by learning how to determine the ionization constant of weak electrolyte so we have seen the degree of dissociation calculation of weak electrolyte we have seen how uh, are we calculating the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for weak electrolyte let's come back and finish off this ionization constant basically is denoted by the alphabet k that let us see what it is now suppose if i take a solution right uh, when i have a solution in that solution i very well know the there is always an equilibrium between the cation and the anion and the unionized solution right that means there is always an existing an equilibrium between unionized part and the ionized part both will exist in equilibrium right now this equilibrium constant for an e weak electrolyte is denoted by a formula let us see how are we applying the cold rush law in this now suppose if i take the i said in a in a solution i am let let me assume certain amount of concentration so at certain amount of that is concentration c now what's going to happen this particular concentration most important thing i said it has ionized right means there's certain amount of degree of ionization in that so where did we use we have also used this word alpha c what is this this is degree of ionization of the cation or the anion and the cation then now at concentration c if i take <coughs> at when this particular uh, thing has reached an equilibrium there there's certain amount of equilibrium between both how are we writing this is equal to c into 1 minus alpha the concentration of this is c into alpha the degree of ionization of cation and c into alpha degree of ionization of anion again c is a concentration then this will be 0 and 0 when it has reached an equilibrium the concentration of this becomes c alpha this also is c alpha and the part when i consider a b the reverse direction i find it is equal to c 1 minus alpha done now 
<coughs> what is uh, according to this one equilibrium constant what are we writing the products by the reactants correct so what do we write a plus and b minus by divided by products by the reactant concentration now what is the product uh, sorry the product concentration which we got this is equal to c alpha this is again c alpha divided by a b is c into 1 minus alpha right now what can we write this one this one as c square alpha square done divided by c into 1 minus alpha cancel this this and this gets cancelled it becomes c so what is k equal to now c alpha square by 1 minus alpha now what is alpha we have already studied this alpha already in one of the application it is a ratio of molar conductivity at certain concentration divided by ratio of molar conductivity uh, ratio of with the molar conductivity at infinite dilution this is what is the thing now substitute that value in this what do i get c into lambda c divided by lambda m infinity by square and this whole thing divided by 1 minus the whole thing just again the same thing lambda at certain molar conductivity at certain concentration divided by certain molar conductivity at infinite dilution done further if i have to simplify and cancel the terms what do you get k is equal to c into right this one thing goes up with this isn't it i'm left with lambda c into lambda molar conductivity concentration c square of that divided by when i take lcm for these things what do i get i'm taking lambda infinity that's common the leftover infinity minus lambda c that's it so i've taken lcm so this is your final formula so now what are we going to do we are going to find out the values of molar conductivity at infinite elements uh, molar conductivity of this one and molar conductivity of this lambda c it's setting concentration from cold rush law and once we get those values i can directly find out in i, I can substitute in this formula and find the ionization constant of uh, your weak electrolytes so simple try to start from the concentration start this concept try to apply in this simplify the concept and finally write the answer